Hello, this is Kevin. And where am I now? Well, let me just show you here. If you can see that, I'm in Selborne. And we had come round to, well, I'll say we, hang on. Yes, they are here, look. There they are, Cynthia and Steve. We had come round to go round Gilbert White's place. Um, but we're now going to put that off actually until probably the spring when the gardens will be all in flower and things like that and will look much nicer. So we've now come to the church and the church is just here in front of me. <clears throat> Let me just show you this. We've got the war memorial directly in front with a couple of lovely remembrance wreaths. And the church is called St Mary's Church of Selborne. And let's just have a wander down this way. Just have a look to get our bearings around the churchyard. But we had a little bit of a walk around the village itself and that was rather charming. So we definitely want to come back again. But this looks like it's a well-used footpath that just runs straight through the churchyard, as many footpaths do, actually. And up here, I don't know whether the camera can pick that up, we've got some kites flying. There was five just now, but I can only actually see three at the moment. But as you can see, it's quite a a sprawled out churchyard and I'm just going to cut up through here and the church is built of stone under a tiled roof it looks like it's a got two gables there and we've got this extension piece on the end this is the east end And we've got the stone porch here, which has had some considerable maintenance work done to it. As you can see, new stonework there on the the, uh, the mullions around the windows. All look very new, actually. So let's head round this way. We've got these little box hedges just in front of us, and a big old tree stump. That's a huge tree stump. And this is uh, an old yew tree. And there's a plaque there. And it says, the tree counts in celebration of the Golden Jubilee of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has designated the Selborne Yew as one of the great British trees in recognition of the place in the National Heritage June 2002. <clears throat> we just wander around this way. Here's the notice board for St Mary's, just there. And as you can see, it's covered in ivy. And it's been designated as one of the 50 great British trees. But absolutely huge stump, but loads and loads of ivy all over it. But um, we've got this. And this is still, that, if that was still living, that would be tremendous size. We've got this, and again, I can't remember the name of it, where you've got the little flints dotted around all the mortar. I must try and find that name and remember it. But just here on this side of the porch, and it says, near this spot lies the remains of our forebearers, disturbed by the fall of the great yew in the gale of 9, uh, 25th of January, 1990. Those who built this church about 1180 AD may be among them. May they rest in peace. So that's when the great yew, which was there, came down. In January 1990. <clears throat> 
let me carry on round this way we're in the west end of the church now the tower is just render the clock face up there which is blue and gold very simple doorway there and we've got this obviously sheds and boilers probably here I'll try and get away from the church <clears throat> It's a right a, a bit of a mishmash of stonework there which looks a bit grubby then on the side of that on the north side that looks as if it's been cleaned up but this is uh, looks like an old yew tree here as well I've got these gravestones dotted around just down here We've got mostly tiled roof, but we've got a slate roof just there. <clears throat> there are lots and lots of molehills, no doubt about that. So Mr. Molly's been very busy. Very plain looking headstone there. So let me have a wander around here. <clears throat> very old gravestones here just have a look at these different ones here <clears throat> and just round this way I think Steve spotted where Look at these heads, look at these mole, mole hills, just huge. <clears throat> and just here in this corner, we have the very simple headstone of Gilbert White. Just there. Gilbert White, 1720 to 1793, and it was his request that he literally had a very simple headstone and on it was supposed to be just the initials GW and I can just about make out excuse me there just about make out the G there and the W there so that's his that's his his grave and as I mentioned earlier it was his his house that we want to want to go around but we're going to leave that until probably the spring. Right in front of our eyes, we've just noticed that there's five, uh, four, five headstones actually built into the wall of this bit of the church here. And I've never ever seen that before. Got headstones very close to the walls, that one in particular. And then you've got this gravel gully which helps to soak up water but they have got a, a drain there which is picking up all the water from the the down pipes there and we've got flood lamps which shine onto those stained glass windows <coughs> Just want to have a little bit more of a wander around here, and there's a, a little notice there to the grave of Gilbert White. Let me just have a look down here as the sun's about to begin to set. St Mary's Church was actually uh, founded in Saxon times. And mentioned in a doomsday book the present church with its Norman Tower which is the big square tower at the other at the 
West End uh, and Nave largely dates from about 1180. The church was restored quite substantially in about the mid 19th century and I'm just trying to skirt around the outside to give you a better view of what it is I can see but it's the light is not great now as I say the sun is be just beginning to set or go down I mean and it was the great nephew of Gilbert Wright uh, Gilbert White um, who was a naturist who was the curator for many years until he, he died in 1793 and there's the, the big square Norman Tower um, and uh, I believe um, uh, Gilbert's White's um, uh, nephew was actually buried in his churchyard as well so I think I'll head back round the east end I believe somewhere in the church, and if we can get in, hopefully we can, Gilbert White is actually commemorated in a, uh, a rather lovely stained glass window. Um, and I think it depicts St Francis and uh, included a, a many other fine treasures belonging to the beautiful church um, is, uh, is an 800 year old font in here as well so as I'm just walking up now on this is the south side of the church we'll have a look to see if the church is actually open well Steve and Cynthia they are actually ahead of me now and they've gone into the church so let me just show you as I walk into the porch these huge doors just in front of you. Just look at the ironwork in, them, in amongst that lot. Beautiful. But just here is a piece of the old great yew from one section of it. Beautifully done. Let's go in through here. Unfortunately, that was my phone going off. And this is the font, um, which I believe is about 800 years old. Just in front, as you come through the door, immediately you get a sense of the, the size of the church for a very, very small village. And the timbers in the roof are, are huge compared to the ones we saw recently at Chawton. All stonework, all very beautiful stone carved out with this lovely piece going all the way round. Come round here to the underneath the Norman bell tower with uh, looks like a peal of eight bells. We've got eight ropes coming down. And just above me you've got a list of the bell ringers that they've had here over the years. So we're in the central nave now. Luckily we found some light switches to, to illuminate this central aisle, this central nave. But the, the, the arches, I'm always amazed by the arches in some of these churches. Some of them have got a, a perfectly formed curve to them, whereas these go up into a more of a slight point. And the main arch going in towards the chancel and the uh, Oh, look at this lovely uh, wooden cross just hanging above me. Very rustic looking cross. I do like that. 
to my right hand side, uh, sorry, to my left hand side, we've got the organ with all the organ pipes in a sort of silvery gray. And just on the floor in front of me, there is a slab, a slate slab to Gilbert White and what looks like a coat of arms there. And just in front of me is the altar. There's a piscina over in the corner. But behind the altar itself is covered in glass. So I'm going to get a shine off of that from the lights and the and the um, reflection of the windows. But interestingly, above the chancel, the timbers have been rendered or plastered in between. And the, the nave stained glass windows are actually set back into the wall. So you've got a reveal, a stone window reveal to each window. Quite often you see them where they're just fairly flush. But certainly they are uh, set in. Now one of the windows in here is dedicated to Gilbert White and I'm not sure which one it is so I need to try and find that one ah I think I've just spotted it over here on the south aisle again we've got a separate little altar here and then in the corner there's another piscina and there's a, a small it looks like a I'm not sure if that's a window up there in the top corner Oh, there's a little bit of a slot in the wall, but this is the stained glass window dedicated to Gilbert White, 1720-1793. Uh, lovers of nature and the man have placed this window here as a mark of admiration and esteem, and that was in 1920. And it says, St Francis preaching to the birds. And there's a huge amount of different birds there, but for me, the most telling one is in the hand, the right hand of St. Francis, and that's a robin. That is a beautiful piece of work. And you've got owls and uh, you've got mallards and you've got herons, you've got starlings. That's just beautiful. Grouse, I can see some grouse there. That is beautiful. Blue tits, look at that. Swallows. And then you've got St Mary's Church there as well. That is beautiful. This bit here in front of me is actually the window which is just above me. And as I said about the birds, this lists here all the birds that are in the stained glass window. And I don't know whether any of this will be able to be picked up by the camera. But as I've said before, if anybody wants to, to read what's on some of these things, is to actually pause the video and you should be able to read them then. And also, Cynthia noticed that on some of the kneeling pads that they've got here also depicts different animals. This one's got kingfishers on. That one's got a fox on. And if I come along here a bit further, I've got a badger. And then we've got a heron. And then we've got a woodpecker there all rather beautifully done that one looks like grouse on there but lovely lovely kneel kneeling puffs there 
I've noticed here as well, just in front of me, all these different tiles. All very similar in size, but the patterns look completely different. Yeah, and Cynthia's just pointing out we've got these lovely kneeling puffs in front of me. Again, depicting different animal, animals, different birds. And we have more of the tiles here. And they all seem to be in sort of set sizes in squares. Squares within squares. And I don't know whether that up there is what they call an ombre. Could be. But rather lovely. And while we're here, something else we wanted to look at, and that was these, there's three Knights Templar headstones. There's one there, there's one just there, and there's one over this side. And let me just have a wander over here. And show you this one. Let me just back away a little bit and I can show you that. That these are all, as I said, all Knights Templar headstones. You can see on the stonework there, atropaic marks scratched into the stone and you've got that on either side of these window reveals they're on all of them by the looks of it and this is on the north side of the church let me just have a wander over here and see if there's any more there's none on that window there there's none on that one there there are some on that one. But of course, these could also be just where the stones are cut. But these have got all stone mullions all the way round the windows. And as I've said just, just now, these are the windows that are dedicated to Gilbert White. Oh, what a lovely church. The other thing that's rather lovely is this tapestry hanging between these two windows. That's rather lovely there. And above this west window, we have a coat of arms. 1780 I can't quite make out what that says on there GR looks like up there that's a rather lovely one as well I've seen something like that before in other places other churches but as I mentioned about the arches the actual curve of the arch has got to be three feet across quite amazing construction the huge circular pillar underneath each arch and there's what six six pi circular pillars and the other thing I nearly forgot to mention before we go is these rather huge doors this is the inside let me just pop it outside and just show you these from the outside I'll close the doors up and then go back in again because Steve and Laura are still in there uh, Steve, Steve and Laura, Steve and Cynthia are still in there just look at the size of those doors, they're huge.
Then we pop back in. And I'll find Cynthia. Cynthia and Steve somewhere in here probably hiding as usual and that would be our trip to the church St Mary's of Selborne finished for today the other thing that um, was quite interesting talking to Mr Reid um, and we were talking about the stained glass windows to Gilbert White and he mentioned about the, during the Second World War in Japan, the only book that was in publication during that time was Gilbert White's book. And interestingly, um, which I had heard of before, but he said ever since the Gilbert White's book was first published, it's never been out of print, which is quite amazing. So we've now finished our walk round St Mary's We've really enjoyed it, actually, looking around the church um, and actually talking to Mr. Reed as well. So that was lovely. So anyway, this will be Kevin, Stephen. 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 With a PH. With a PH. <laughs> Kevin, Steve and Cynthia saying bye-bye and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye. Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed that walk. If you did, please uh, give the channel a, a thumbs up and a like and uh, do leave a comment. And do consider subscribing to Kevin's channel. Hopefully that way you'll be able to enjoy one of his walks sometime in the future. Thanks for watching and cheerio.